The ability to read and write G-code. Not mandatory to run a CNC, but essential if you want to diagnose an existing program, or of course, to write your own toolpath. And the best way to learn is to write your own toolpath. So with that, today's programming exercise is this Hello World Masterpiece. <laughs> if you're up for a bit of G-coding fun, let's hit it. I've decided to throw a lot of variety at this one, so it should prove interesting. Absent from this program will be tool number callouts, tool radius and length compensations, and spindle commands. We simply don't need them. What we do need, though, is to start writing this program. The project is on a quarter inch graph paper and is full scale. The XY origin is mid left, with the Z origin being surface of the paper. This program I'm writing in inches, but if you prefer metric, it would probably be easier if you wrote this program as if designed on 5mm graph paper. As we program the header, use G21 instead of G20. From then on, of course, you will have to write all locations, distances, and feed rates in metric. And with that, we can start programming. Our blank canvas is a standard notepad text document. To start it off, it's a good idea to write whatever program comments you find helpful. All text after a semicolon is ignored and is not seen as executable G-code. Another way to do this is by use of parentheses. Next, some safety codes. These are here to cancel certain possible pre-existing conditions. If you want more information on these, Mach 3 has a built-in reference list to help you out. Now for some program specific G-codes. XY plane selection for circular arcs, programming units are in inches, constant velocity mode for toolpath, and absolute distance mode. With the header done, let's go ahead and save it. We'll continue writing the program through Mach 3. To aid in visualization of what we're doing, I went ahead and zeroed the machine. And sent the z-axis to a standoff distance of 80 thousandths, which is also the pen up location for this project. Alright, let's load the program. Edit G-code. And let's continue. Now some of this programming I'm going to run through rather quickly, so have the pause button handy if you wish to look at the code. Alright, this program is going to contain four motion codes. These codes are all within the same modal group, so only one can be active at a time. Being modal, once one is activated, it will stay activated until switched to a different code within this group. We're currently in absolute mode, so all distances are relative to the fixed program origin. Our first destination is shown here with the red dot. And we want to wrap it to this position with the pen over this location, not on it. Switch to G1 and bring the pen down at a feed rate of 10 inches per minute. Now on the paper, we can start writing the H. The blue dot is our destination and we can increase the feed rate. Remember, G1 is modal, so we don't need to write it in this block. Heading to the next dot, we need only supply the coordinate, as feed rates are also modal. Here's the rest of the points. Once back at the start, send Z to standoff distance. And H is done. I'm going to go ahead and throw down an M30 end of program, making sure to hit the enter key after it's typed, otherwise Mach 3 won't see it. To check the code, close and save, and the toolpath display should update automatically. If for some reason it doesn't, regenerate toolpath. All right, edit, and let's continue with E. Push this M30 down a bit. E. Just like with H, wrap it to red dot, feed the pen down, then clockwise around. Pen up, and E is done. Close to check it. Hey, we're on a roll here. <laughs> Let's switch things up a bit with W. Let's change from absolute to incremental distance mode. In incremental mode, the current tool position becomes a temporary zero origin for all axes for the next move. In the first line, throw in a G91. The yellow dot is where we are and is now the temporary zero. To get to the red dot, we need to move X negative a quarter inch, Y negative a half inch. Now that we're there, this location is now the temporary origin. To bring the pen down, we have to move Z axis negative 80 thousandths. Crash territory is what this is if you fail to ensure that you switched modes while programming. Been there. <laughs> there is, however, a safety check we'll look at later. For now, incrementally step your way around W. Again, I'm going clockwise. When you're done, check the program. All right, here's the program so far. 
If you need to take some time and look through it, go ahead and pause the video. If you've got it under control, let's continue with letter O. We're changing back to absolute mode here, which returns origin to program zero. Start location is red, pen down, and move to blue dot. The circular arc. For the purposes of this video, although we will be going through several arc programming methods, we will not be going through all of the available syntax options. That's my little disclaimer here. <laughs> all arcs in this program are on the XY plane, so a G17 has to be applied, which we already did at the beginning of this program. For this first letter O, we'll be writing counterclockwise arcs using center format. X and Y locate arc endpoint, I and J locate arc center. I being its X coordinate, J being its Y coordinate. Both the endpoint and the center can be in either absolute or incremental mode or any combination thereof. We are currently in absolute mode for X and Y and we'll be staying there for the rest of the program. For center coordinates, we'll be using both. Our first letter O will be in absolute. All locations here are to the nearest eighth inch. We're currently at the bottom of the blue line. The blue dot across the street <laughs> is arc endpoint. The lower purple dot is arc center. And with that, move up to the next point and the next arc. Red dot is arc endpoint. Upper purple dot is arc center. Pin up, then rinse and repeat for the inner tool path. Endpoints are different, but the arc centers are the same. All right, letter R is next. It's gonna use the same arc format, except opposite direction. Now, if you would like to try your hand at it before I show you the code, go for it. Some tips, go clockwise, which also means clockwise arcs. So G2 instead of G3. Start at the red dot of the outer tool path. You'll have about a three second window to pause this video. Any questions? No questions? Go. go. <laughs> if you actually took up that little challenge, let me know how you did. Here's my code if you want to pause the video to check it out. A side note here as we move forward. We're going to be losing sight of program origin, so the light blue dot will identify X at its 4 inch mark. Alright, next we're going to hit D. With D, arc centers will be in incremental. Get into position. Arc endpoint is in absolute. With incremental IJ mode, I and J represent arc center location relative to arc start point. So 0 for I and negative 3 eighths for J. Move to the next point. Again, endpoint and absolute. With this arc, center is negative 3 eighths from start point in the X axis and the Y axis 0. Now on around to finish the toolpath. And then hit the inner toolpath. With the center format, you have the option not to include I or J in the code if it is zero. It's up to you. Okay, let's finish this up. For the upper O, we're gonna change things up yet again and use the radius format for the arcs. Still, X and Y locate arc endpoint. For R, there are two inputs, the obvious one of course being the radius. The other one is a positive or negative value. For arcs up to 180 degrees, make the radius positive. For arcs 180 to 359-ish degrees, make the radius negative. With this radius method, arc centers are calculated automatically, which sometimes produces an undesirable result. <laughs> That's just a heads up, so experiment with it. Okay, for the arc, going clockwise, give it the endpoint and the positive radius. Move to the next point, and again. Hit the inner tool path, and you're done. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe it is about time to write a subroutine. <laughs> First though, let's write the code for this L. 
in absolute going clockwise. Check it. Okay, good. Now, whether you realize or not, we just gave birth to our subroutine. Let's call it O2017. That's letter O 2017. At the bottom of it, place M99. Above it, place M30, separating the subroutine from the program. Check it, L should be gone. Now we just have to call the sub with M98, P, and then the sub number, minus the O. Close, and L should be back. This just shows that our subroutine is working. Alright, we need two more L's, so let's call the sub two more times. Now that's all well and good. We have three L's, but currently they're on top of each other. Enter the origin shift, AKA coordinate system offset. Just before the second call, let's tell the machine controller with G52 that X negative one inch is the new zero. The effect of which is a relocation of tool paths here on out. Just before the third call, Reset the X offset by stating X zero and apply a Y offset with a negative one and three quarter inches. After the sub call, reset Y. All that's left now is the world arc. Red dot start point. blue dot endpoint. We're going to use the radius format. The arc is over 180 degrees so it gets a negative value. And that's that. Some pre-flight checks. Importantly, program limits. The safety check for Z, it's all good, no moves below zero. Now if I screwed it up somewhere, It'll show up. However, the G52 coordinate system offset will not show up. Here, I G52 the Z axis for the world arc negative one inch. In the program, the arc is still zero. It's the coordinate system that moved. So just be aware of that. I'll leave you with this to ponder and experiment with. G68 coordinate system rotation with block delete, making it optional. There's something missing. Oh. International Space Station. <laughs>